Welcome to Module 10, The Message and the Medium. In this module, we're going to be identifying different types of media that you can use in your campaign, and we'll be briefly discussing the pros and cons of each. And lastly, we want to demonstrate how a campaign should be integrated, meaning a good campaign that has legs should be able to be used on various platforms and different types of media to fully tell the story. Now, it's not as straightforward as you think, so let's look at how we can use this. Oftentimes in advertising, we see a mixture of different uh, techniques or media used to tell the story. Take, for example, the Old Spice campaign, the Smell Like a Man Man. Here we see our ambient outdoor at the very bottom of the screen. You're familiar with the television commercials. We have interactive and social where you can actually go through and click on different things and make the character interact. And then you have your traditional print ads. Now what you'll notice in each of these, you have a lot of the same visual formats and the same concept. Here our concept is, let's show a manly man who's sort of a gentleman, um, and he uses the same t tone and the same voice, and you have the same script writers writing what his dialogue is going to be. You see the same visual elements, you see the same typeface, the same script. Um, so there's a lot of visual cues that remind you that this is all part of the same campaign. And lastly, of course, we have that consistent tagline, the smell like a man, man. Here you can use this concept across all these different touch points to ensure that your audience recognizes the campaign no matter what type of media that they're using. So let's get into some of these finer points of the media and talk about how they can be used and the pros and cons of each. First, obviously, we have digital. Now, digital means a lot to a different people, and obviously this term digital has grown uh, with technology and the ability to target ads. But what I want to focus on in digital, in terms of how we can actually use digital space for interactive uh, engagement. So this is less about being shown a Facebook ad or being served a banner ad, but actually creating content that is fun, interactive, uh, something that you can't do with a print or television ad. So here we have digital. It's going to be typically part of an integrated campaign, and the goal is to get you to click or interact with some activity that's going to eventually take you to our landing page or our site page for the client. There's a lot of people involved with a digital uh, campaign like this, and that's what makes it a giant con, uh, or negative attribute, is that it requires designers, web architects, producers, web experts, etc. The thing with this is you don't want to just simply put something on the web and let people and expect them to play with it. It needs to have some sort of interactive component, meaning there has to be a big reward for their time. Here you can see the orbits uh, on the very bottom of the right screen here. And you can see that this was a miniature golf game. They weren't trying to get you to buy travel packages. Instead, they were letting you play a game and reminding you that Orbitz was part of this adventure. Above it, some of you may have remembered uh, Burger King's subservient chicken. Now, this was a long time ago in some of the earliest digital ads. And it would actually let you go through and you could have sort of this... Um, interact with this character on the computer screen and you'd click certain things in the room and the chicken would in interact with it. Um, go back and look at it if you're curious if you're not familiar with that campaign, but it was one of the earliest digital campaigns. Again, the pros of this, obviously it's going to get people engaged with your product and it's going to give something that's going to stand out and let people talk about what you're doing. Do make sure that you are obeying some of those basic rules of storytelling but also visual identity. Make sure that somewhere between this you're using the same typefaces and color palettes and you're using consistent tagline if it's part of a larger campaign. Next we have what's called transmedia campaign. Now transmedia campaign seems like it's just your typical integrated campaign but the big thing to take away here is, is when you look at this word transmedia which means changing media campaign. What we want to do is we want to actually create a campaign that's integrated through different medias but different touch points of this medium tells a different part of the story. And what this does is it encourages the user to go and seek out new content and find different elements to tell the story. Some of you may remember from some of the earlier GoDaddy commercials during the Super Bowl. One of the first GoDaddy commercials that they had years ago showed a woman in the shower scandalously um, showing her feet and her arms and her legs and never really revealing the woman in the shower. Uh, this was on the TV at the 30 second spot. At the end of the spot it said visit GoDaddy.com to see the rest. Their web traffic went up because people wanted to see what it was that they were going to find out and there when you went to the landing page you actually just saw how to register a domain. Um, but the fact was it took them from television to the next page which was on online. Here's another example that you see from uh, a film. Uh, I just first glance you may not recognize what this is from. Um, so as I'm talking about this, see if you can put it together. 
But what happens is we see part of a story, and the very first one's just a large banner ad, and it says, See the Future, Capital Couture, and it looks like it might be for a clothing company. What you want to do is then get people to go to the website, and there you see the different characters wearing this stuff. Quickly, you find out that this is actually a portal for the Hunger Games, and it's talking about the fashion of the capital, and at the end of it, it gives you the movie trailer for uh, the Hunger Games trilogy that was uh, came out. What you want to do is each part of this campaign tells a different part of the story, and it guides the audience through different touch points and call to actions. You can and should use multiple mediums and incorporate ambient and experiential mediums as well as digital print and television, and I'll talk more about what makes a good ambient and experiential medium a little bit in this lecture, and then we'll have another module dedicated to those two mediums. We want to use great interface and great seamless transitions, so that one point one medium goes back directly to the next, similar to the GoDaddy commercials. You had a television commercial that took you to an online page. Number uh, The biggest bottom two that you must abide by is it must be customer centric and the ad must be invisible. Meaning there needs to be a payoff. There needs to be something that's going to encourage the user to go from one area to the next. Case in point with GoDaddy. By teasing what the scandalous and the forbidden things that you couldn't show on TV, people automatically flocked online thinking that they were going to see the big reveal of the woman in the shower. Um, this didn't look like a typical ad for GoDaddy, and it didn't even tell you what it was for a domain registration site. It was all part of a way to get make it look like it wasn't an ad, but rather a payoff for the viewers. Going into that, we have our social media. Now, keep in mind, I'm not calling this digital. Digital and social media are inherently different in the way that they're used and the way that they can be useful for marketing and storytelling. Digital, again, is about interactivity. Social media relies on user-generated content. This is where you as the advertising person can tease the story or begin the story or help uh, start the campaign, but you're really getting the bulk of your information and the bulk of your effectiveness is going to come from users contributing to the story. It gets people involved and allows them to develop their own ideas. Now, when I was at my cur uh, previous job, I developed a social media campaign called An Engineering Mind. Our challenge was to get a very, very boring business-to-business -business engineering product into the hands of the general public and mostly college students to try to get them familiar with our products so that they would use our products in their colleges and then hopefully when they became engineers they would use it in their jobs. Rather than uh, bombard them with your typical standard engineering type platform speak, we decided to give them a character called Todd. And Todd was a sarcastic, funny, egocentric engineer. Now. Part of what he, Todd would do is he would ask people each week to write in and ask him questions that only an engineer can answer. He would filter through the best and then he'd talk about them in a quick social media engagement. And this was done on YouTube. Now what's funny about this, this was done back in 2007 before we actually even knew what social media was and how to use it effectively. What we learned from this is that if you made content that was original and spoke to people, and then if you actually listened to people who were writing in and respond to their comments, that they would be an active and a participant in your ad campaign, and they would help share and spread the message. Now, obviously, that seems like second nature now, but it's amazing what we didn't know in 2007. Now, obviously, there are some risky potential problems with this. Sometimes you run the risk of saying something that may be picked up in the public relations world that may cause a PR crisis. Other way things that can happen is that you may end up uh, getting people, if you're asking them to generate content, they may actually run with the hashtag and do their own thing, which could get picked up. Uh, you see this with um, banks or financial institutions have asked, what's your goal? And a lot of people during the time when they were upset with the banking uh, market actually use the hashtags that they proposed to point out the fact that they were um, not quite doing ethical business. Lastly, you want to create shareable content, and it should be short and catchy. Most people on social and when they're watching videos online are only going to go past maybe two minutes, if that. So make sure that whatever you have in that content that is advertising related, that it's funny, short, catchy, viral, emotional, has all the good tints of a good story, but most importantly, make sure it's short. Now, one of the next things you can do is experiential, and I particularly love this type of advertisements. What experiential does is it actually lets people be a part of the advertising experience without actually knowing that they're part of the advertising experience. What happens is a user walks through some sort of sponsored content, 
And the goal of this is not necessarily to get them to buy something at the end of this, but rather have get them to generate positive feelings about the product. So here we have, for example, acts is one night only. And what they did is they asked people to track them on social media. They went to college campuses and they said where the Axe bus was going to be and that they'd be giving away free concert tickets. And they didn't tell you who the concert was for. People would run around and try to follow the Axe bus and find out where they were going to be at using Facebook and Twitter. They'd find run of, uh, at the X bus, get the tickets, and then that night there was a surprise concert. This one happened to be Girl Talk. When you went through it, it was a giant party hosted by Girl Talk, and they actually had TV monitors all around where people could uh, use the hashtag uh, X O N O or for one night only. Um, and this, at the end of it, they weren't trying to get you to buy X, but hopefully they asked people when they left to think about next time they needed to buy something. It was uh, X. It was an immersive experience that transcends just your basic message and storytelling, but rather got you involved in what the product was. Now, lastly, we have press and, uh, press and print. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this since we've already gone through this in a lot of lectures already. Um, but obviously, this is going to be a combination of art and copy. It's the hardest to create. It can also be the least effective. Unfortunately, if you want to get on the creative side of advertising, you need to have more of this in your uh, portfolio. The reason is, is it's the hardest to tell a story using a single print or using a couple print pieces. Uh, and if you can effectively tell a story using art and copy across three different print pieces, it tells uh, your job or your potential employer or creative directors that you could handle uh, more forgiving mediums like television commercials and big budget, uh, big budget campaigns. So uh, really this is the, the thing that you have to muster and master in order to get to the next level. Um, I'm only going to spend a few minutes on ambient or a few seconds on ambient. That's because we're going to spend an entire module on this. But ambient is where any surface becomes advertising uh, fair game. Here you see this lays in the top left corner where they actually had a billboard that talked about potatoes being fresh. And then above it in the subway, they actually had uh, modeled what it looked like potatoes growing underground uh, to make it look like they were growing potatoes uh, above ground of the subway. Obviously, they weren't. Um, I really love this next one for the WWF, the World, Wife, World Wildlife Federation, and they had green paper towels, and as you used them, you could actually see uh, what using paper towels and using waste products would actually do to the environment. It was just a nice little message of, hey, be cautious of what you're using. Um, here you have an escalator for National Geographic. As you're going down an escalator, it looks like you're going to an alligator print, so just using print piece on top of a, a different surface. And then also you have ambient, which is this poster here where it looks like it's a... Um, uh, just a standard poster about actual child abuse. What was cool about this particular um, ad piece is that from the from three feet and below, you actually saw a different version of this picture, and it actually showed the same boy but with bruises and uh, blood on his face. And it said, if you're a victim of abuse at home, make sure you call this number. So it was a way to circumvent um, uh, abuse child abusers and let the message get out to those who are being abused in a secretive manner. So again, using any surface and using it in a unique way to get attention. What we want to do is the goal of any good campaign is to integrate these, meaning we want to put all the pieces together so that again, you get every touch point no matter where you go. If I interact with the campaign on digital, I want to be able to look and see a magazine and have that same message. And then if I see it on com TV commercial, I want it to have the same message there. If you reinforce and he keep getting the same message over and over again, eventually people are going to use that as top of mind awareness. So what do we mean by integrated? One of the best things I like to use is this example of Cinderella. Disney movies in general are great examples of integrated media. Whether you buy the movie, the book, or you visit the theme park, they all have the same story or the same big idea. A princess who is uh, held in captivity and that she meets the prince. A uh, fairy godmother gives her a dress, turns her into a princess for the night. Uh, when she returns back at midnight, she obviously everything goes back to normal, and the prince pursues this relationship and tries to find uh, the woman of his dreams. Um, you see the same concept across all three mediums, but no matter where you go, you're getting the same concept. Uh, and I like to use Disney as an example of experiential. You're getting there, and you're seeing Disney's castle. Um, a good advertising campaign does the same thing. Whether you're seeing a TV commercial, a print ad, or an experience, you're giving the same concept. There's a big idea represented across many formats, and unlike transmedia campaigns, the story is coordinated. It's a combination of print, video, interactive, ambient, public relations, free swag, sponsorships, blogs, and new media. Now, 
What I mean by new media basically just means that stuff that hasn't been defined yet. It could be an ambient, it could be street art, it could be a PR stunt, a sculpture. It really has no limits. And what I would like you to do is you're going through and we're going to move into the next modules of experiential and ambient. Is I want you to really think about in your campaign, are there are some really adventurous things that you could do. There are no limits. What hasn't been thought of that you can use to create your big idea? Uh, the best thing about some of these early competitions and these young creative competitions is you have the latitude and the freedom to try new things. Now, there's a TV spot that I want to show you. Um, actually, I'm going to skip that. What I want to show you is this video from Heineken Trop. Now, this was a obviously they used this video to record and show uh, everyone what they were doing. Uh, but what they did is they actually set up some sort of ambient uh, PR type thing in an airport to get people to talk about Heineken. They use this tagline: "Legends aren't born, they're dropped." Disclaimer: It's not my favorite tagline, but it's still what we had to work with. As a result of this campaign that they ran, they actually created a YouTube miniseries that had over two million views. And it looked at these people who they actually got to participate in this um, this little uh, airport uh, experiment, if you will. Um, and it was a lot of great publicity. And here's what they did for their ambient uh, publicity stunt. So here in this campaign, you actually see um, what I think is a really great use of a publicity stunt to tell a message. Uh, what I like about this, and if I can just kind of go back here to, let's see if I can skip ahead. What I'd like you to take notice of is, although this is a 
Uh, publicity spun for Heineken. There's a couple things that they do really well to make sure that you get the message of Heineken. Here we use the same green color palette throughout with even this little tot of red that lets you gives you the visual identity. Uh, we use the same type of typeface that actually matches the Heineken. And what their goal is to even use this hashtag dropped is to get people to talk about it. And by using the same visual scheme, it, hopefully it ties back to what Heineken was doing. Uh, the results of this campaign were highly profitable as you can see. Uh, this is a European company and they will increase their, their revenue um, by over a million euros in uh, one year and this was the only campaign that they did. So not a bad, uh, you know, considering that they didn't have to pay for any real media time. This was a one-time publicity stunt. They had a production crew that created this video, posted it to YouTube, got picked up and shared there, and then the media series that they posted to YouTube. They probably, if I had to guess, spent maybe a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars on production costs to get this out. So that's not a bad return for on your investment. Um, here again, we have one central big idea. It was supported by print, folks are on social media and entertainment, and it got attention and the revenue increased. Um, a couple things that you also need to be aware of in this area of new media and being integrated is that if you're a copywriter, you need to be flexible and you need to be able to write stories for different formats quickly. We've talked about how to write for print, but you also now need to know how to write um, for social media. Uh, a few pros have done well. The immediate surrounding area, unexpected places, aggressive, invasive, gorilla at times, really good writers understand how what few words work best in different environments. Most of you are children of social media, that you've grown up around Twitter and Facebook being at your disposal from the beginning that you could actually start using the internet. Um, so you should be perfect for this. Here we have um, this Oreo ad from the Super Bowl that was between San Francisco and the Baltimore Ravens and the power went out. What made this really great viral ad is that they had it done right away and they said power out, no problem. And then they had an artist quickly put together this really, really simple graphic and then the tagline you, or the headline or whatever you want to call it, you can still dunk in the dark. Um, this just was great brand presence, it was great timing and they had all the right people in the right room at the right time and they were able to get a lot of traction. So really good writers understand how to use this and how to effectively use the media around them. Uh, again. You understand a good writer, a good copywriter has a concept that gets under the radar. Here people weren't realizing that they were being advertised to for Heineken, but instead that they were getting a free trip and they just happened to be part of Heineken's brand. Uh, a few things to keep in mind though. I like to call these legal PR cons. Things to, rules to keep in mind. Number one, make sure it's legal. Obviously this is a no-brainer. You can't give alcohol to minors. Don't uh, promote using drugs. Um, obviously don't do any banking crimes or anything like that. So make sure it's just legal. Uh, as you're coming up with some ideas, obviously I've talked a lot about using the green hat to get to ideas, but when you get to the end, number one, make sure it's practical. Is this actually logical? Can you do it? Do you have the time and the resources and the money and the budget to actually make something happen? Um, is it something that there's the technology that's even allowed to do it without a large cost of investment? Relevant. Sometimes we get really excited about doing things that are cool for the sake of being cool. Make sure that it's strategic and involves the target and it involves the client. Don't just have this really fun idea that you've been waiting to try and then just pop it in whenever it seems convenient. It needs to make sure it goes back to the brief. Cost effective. Obviously, you have a budget. Can you do it within a budget? Original. Don't replicate. Originate. If there's a campaign or some sort of um, PR thing that you like that someone did, look at it, find out what it is that you liked about it, and then try to recreate something using those same principles. Obviously we want something that's non-threatening. You don't want to try to scare people and that's going to have a negative impact on the brand that you're trying to work for if you're terrorizing people. And then lastly, simple. Sometimes we get really big ideas and we have a hard time boiling them down to the finite actual effect of what we want to do. Keep everything simple. If you can't say what the big idea or the execution is in one sentence or one minute, then it's probably going to be too big to actually get done. So here's an example of something that's not good. Uh, back in 2007, there was the film Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and they wanted to do a movie promotion. Uh, these two gentlemen that you see being carted away in handcuffs, um, what they did is they put up these, um, I guess, their little packages. Uh, I haven't seen the movie. 
um, that represented the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and they were going to get people to talk about it. Unfortunately, this is during a time of heightened security in 2007, uh, and they placed these around Boston, and people actually thought they were bombs. They called them in. Um, these people didn't have permits to do this. The uh, police weren't aware of what they were doing, and they were actually arrested for uh, inciting fear. So, again, make sure it's legal, make sure you have the right permits, and make sure you're not scaring people. Um, a good one is the truth campaigns. They've actually closed, got the permits and closed down a city and a street to have the uh, the singing cowboy. Uh, they've done stand-ins and fall-ins where people, you know, get put in body bags all around a, a tobacco building. So it gets people's awareness. Here's one that I actually think is great because not this isn't disrupting people uh, like the truth ad campaign, but this is actually helping people. Here you have IBM and their platform or their idea of smart ideas for smarter cities. Well, what could be more smart if you're trying to talk about how your technology is going to create a city than actually solving some of the basic primal things that we need, like shelter from rain or using a ramp to get up the stairs? Again, these little things that people are using for their convenience are uh, there to remind people that IBM is a really smart company and that you should use them. Obviously, always start with your big idea and then apply it to ambient possibilities, but don't try to get a good idea and fit it to your concept. So going back to IBM. Their tagline is smart cities, uh, for smart ideas for smarter cities. Our concept shows small innovations that make a quote unquote smart city. Execution, a tangible ambient displays that are novel and useful. That's how simple this really can be. Heineken, for example, strategy, show brand as being adventurous and global. Our concept, drop everything, take risks and travel the world. Our execution, let's do a live challenge in the airport and then a mini series. Is it possible that the execution came before the concept for these? Yes. Does it support the strategic goal? Yes. Then it's okay. I like to say is that the chicken of the egg concept organic? You know what? As long as they work, it works. All right. This is module 10. This is how to use integrated media to tell a story. Uh, make sure that you can read the Barry readings on this. Uh, moving forward, we'll be talking more specifically about each of these different components in greater detail uh, and giving some better examples of some rules and do's and don'ts for each of them. Thank you very much.